Hey guys, this is Austin, and today I'm here with a video going over a pair of brand new phones. The HTC One X as well as the LG Optimus 4X HD. Uh, so long names aside, these phones are special for one single reason. They're some of the first phones to be shipping with a quad-core processor. Now one of the things to consider with quad-core, and especially on a phone, is you're going to be your battery life. Now, of course, you know, having quad-core fantastic, you have tons of power, everything's going to run really smoothly, multitasking, all that kind of stuff, it's going to be great. However, it's not going to be great for long. You're going to be on your phone for 20 minutes and the battery's going to be dead. However, that really shouldn't be an issue with these phones, as they both have the NVIDIA Tegra 3 chip. Now, like I said, it is quad-core, but actually, it's not technically. It actually has five cores. So it has four cores, and they can be clocked up to 1.5 GHz. However, it has a fifth companion core, which is clocked somewhere more like 500 MHz, so much, much slower. And, you know, when you're not really needing to do anything all that graphically intense or anything like that, the four cores are off, and you're just using the single low power. So, for example, if you're doing Twitter, email, you know, your lock screen, very, very simple things, that will take care of it. So let's talk about the phones themselves. So the first one is going to be the LG Optimus 4X HD. Now again, long name aside, this is going to be the new flagship for LG, and it has a lot of really cool specs. So to go along with its Tegra 3 chip, it's also going to have a gigabyte of RAM, 16 gigabytes of internal storage, it's going to have a 4.7 inch 1280 by 720 IPS display, and probably most important, it's going to ship with Android 4.0 ice cream sandwich. It'll also have a 2150 milliamp hour battery, which combined with the Tegra 3 should be plenty of battery life. It also will have a 1.3 megapixel front facing camera and 8 megapixel rear facing camera. Uh, so overall it looks like it'll be a pretty good phone. Probably my only slight reservation about it has to do with the fact that LG has put their skin over it. So of course like I said it does have Android 4.0 but they've ported their skin over. And in general I haven't really been a big fan of the a LG skin on Android 2.3. I definitely haven't tried it out on Ice Cream Sandwich yet so I'm not going to judge. But overall it hasn't been my favorite skin so we'll have to see how it goes. If you guys are interested in picking this one up, it should be available quarter two this year in Europe, and I'm sure it will be brought to an American carrier, probably under a different name with some tweaks and that kind of thing. The next phone is going to be the new HTC flagship, the One X. Now this one isn't quite official yet, there have already been some leaked images and all that kind of stuff, but in general it looks to have very similar specs. With another 4.7 inch 720p display, the NVIDIA Tegra 3 quad-core technically processor, and it's going to also have Android 4.0 with Sense 4.0 on top, it looks to be a really solid flagship for HTC. Now again, it's got another skin on top of uh, Android, however I do actually like Sense. I do still prefer the vanilla Android, but if I had to pick a skin, it would probably be Sense. But of course, I can't make a video talking about quad-core Android phones without mentioning the Samsung Galaxy S3. Now this one is going to be a little bit farther off. Samsung has said that the successors of the Galaxy S2 will be launched a little bit later on this year. However, we've definitely heard some rumors and stuff about it, and probably the most notable thing is something that Samsung said just the other day. So they've launched their brand new Exynos, and I'm probably saying it wrong, but uh, their brand new processors in dual as well as quad-core form. And now their original processors in the Galaxy S2 were really, really fast. They still remain very fast today. And of course, make it quad-core, it's just going to be that much faster. So what do you guys think? Are you interested in one of these quad-core phones? Or you may be looking to see how battery life and LTE and all that kind of stuff goes? Or are you fine with your current dual or single core phone? Definitely let me know in the comment section below. Anyway guys, if you enjoyed, definitely be sure to leave the video a thumbs up. I really appreciate that. And of course, if you're interested in more videos like this, be sure to subscribe.